untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games video. Today we're kicking off the alternate win condition week on this channel with a 13 tribal deck that's looking to win the game with Triskai Decaphobia, a 4-man enchantment saying at the beginning of our upkeep each player with exactly 13 life loses the game and then we can choose between each player gains one life or each player loses one life. So we need to get our opponent's life total to 13 somehow and that's where Tree of Perdition will come in handy. This is an 013 plant with Defender that can tap and then exchange target opponent's life total with Tree of Perdition's toughness. So if our opponent's at 20, we activate our tree, then now our tree has 20 toughness and our opponent goes to 13 life, which is exactly what we need to win the game with our enchantment. And then to complete the 13 trifecta, we've got four copies of Demonic Bargain, a sorcery that exiles the top 13 cards of our library, and then we can search the remainder of our library for any card and put it into our hand. So we'll often still have at least one Tree of Perdition or Triskaidekaphobia left to search up, so we can assemble both both on the battlefield. And then the rest of our deck has plenty of cheap interaction and ways to discard and draw to help assemble all these combo pieces. And then also very important is to have a way to destroy opposing lands, because let's say the opponent has a pain land in their mana base, then they can wait for us to activate Tree of Perdition, opponent goes to 13, and then before they lose the game to Triskaidekaphobia, they could just tap their land to deal themselves one damage and then they no longer lose the game. So that's why we need four copies of Cleansing Wildfire, can destroy any land, its controller searches for a basic and we also get to draw a card and then wildfire does double duty in this deck since it can also be used to ramp if we target our own indestructible land we've got four copies of cascading cataracts two copies of dark Steel citadel we've got four cataracts in case the opponent tries to target our citadel with karn which can be quite painful otherwise but uh, these are indestructible lands that we can target with wildfire we'll still be able to search for a basic so we're essentially ramping casting a rampant growth and then we get to draw a card at the same time so it's even better and that can potentially set up a turn three tree of perdition or triskaidekaphobia and then the rest of our deck has four copies of Thoughtseize as well as two copies of Duress as cheap hand disruption to maybe take away answers to our enchantment or Tree of Perdition. We've got four copies of Fatal Push as cheap removal alongside two copies of Go for the Throat and then four copies of Bitter Reunion which is helpful in discarding to draw in case we have redundant combo pieces in hand or maybe removal against control decks that we don't need and then we can dig for the missing combo pieces and it's also a way to potentially give our Tree of Perdition haste let's say the opponent does have removal for Tree of Perdition in hand we can still maybe activate our Bitter Reunion in response and then activate our tree putting the opponent's life total to 13 to still maybe win the game and then at 3 mana we've got two copies of Seize the Spoils which can discard and draw two and then make a treasure token in the process also great at enabling revolt for fatal push or maybe casting one of our one drops afterwards and then two copies of valakut awakening can be played as a land or as a way to put a bunch of cards from our hands back into our library and then draw that many cards so that's also a way to get rid of some useless cards and to dig for the missing combo pieces and then our mana base, in addition to the indestructible lands, has plenty of black rat dual lands, because sometimes we want to be able to play a turn one thought seize or fatal push, and then a turn two target our own indestructible land with wildfire, and that's only going to work if we have an untapped black rat dual land, so that's why we have the full set of blood crypt and the full play set of black leaf cliffs. Then we've got a few pathways, the channel lands offer additional interaction, a few basics to search up with our own cleansing wildfire is also important, and then I'm also playing two copies of the castle as an extra card draw engine in the late game in those grindier matchups. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha as our companion, can maybe put it in hand and then discard it to our various discard effects if we're not planning to cast it. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and is acceptable. Got our tree, just need to bargain for Phobia. And then we can Thought Season 1, Tapped Awakening on 2, maybe Fatal Push as well. Opponent on a blue deck with Thing in the Ice. And a Disruption is probably going to be the most annoying to play around. Got Fatal Push for Thing in the Ice. And then our lands will be untapped going forward. So, yeah, we're in a decent spot so far. But they may have drawn into some more relevant interaction in the meantime. That one we can deal with. And then bargain playing cliffs. 
Aerophobia. Still three left. And a 13 toughness. Tree of Perdition is pretty difficult to burn out. Which is a little bit uh, different from reality. Okay, no Jory Disruption, that's good. Just to consider. Surprised they didn't consider a response, maybe implies they only have the one Disruption in the deck. Could still see a Bounce spell bouncing our tree before we get a chance to activate it. Wildfire's got a potential Pain Land covered as well. Okay, now I'll play around Disruption. Opponent can big score, but they'll need to find some pretty specific answers. Opponent's reading our two cards, piecing things together. Galvanic Iteration. Okay, what is this? Double Disruption. Yeah, it sure is. Alright, opponent lives to fight another day. So now we need to keep digging for a second Phobia. Opponent bought themselves quite a bit of time. Can wildfire the uh, Hall of Storm Giants, maybe. Opponent foretells. Can always put Gigantha in hand if we don't draw anything useful. Alright, Bit Reunion's pretty useful. And can keep up a go for the throat. Alright. Soaring City played out, instead of keeping it for potential enchantment. And there's our Phobia, perfect. So... Play Phobia, and then can still put Gigantha in hand afterwards, or keep up, go for the throat. Yeah, let's just keep up, go for the throat, and hang on to the land. Big score, discarding Brotherhood's end. Possible they can take some extra turns here, potentially doubled by iteration. Alright, there's iteration. Six mana left. And yeah, there's Epiphany times two. So opponent gets to make some birds. And take two extra turns. So that's not what we wanted to see. Now, we'll have to wait and see if our opponent tries to keep our life total at 13 as well, in which case we need to go for the throat just before they get that last attack in. So I'm not going to go for the throat anything now. A Leer. That can potentially mess things up as well. Although we could go for the throat if uh, they don't keep up Disruption, that is. Consider. That's fine. Yeah, that took a turn for the worse. First a double Disruption, then a double Epiphany. And another Consider, so I could kill Leer here if I wanted to, but then Pun could just attack us with a single bird, and then we lose our own Phobia. Which I may want to avoid. What else can they do here? Flashback a big score would also be bad. Yeah, let's just hope our opponent doesn't send in a single bird. I think Lear is going to do more damage otherwise. And then if they do send in a single bird, at least it's a draw. Opponent goes all out. There may be an additional Epiphany coming, and this is not a nerfed version, so it still makes the birds. Alright, we're taking six. And if they have a third Epiphany, we're dead. Divide by zero, bouncing our tree. 
So activated in response, they may play a shock land to modify their life total. And then they would still win the game. I guess your opponent can just learn for the life gain spell. Go back up to 15. Nope, get some mascot exhibition. Alright, I guess uh, we got her anyway. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We're missing our Phobia, but we've got Tree, some interaction, Wildfire to deal with any pain lands the opponent might have. So we'll give it a shot. And then it may be worth it to keep up Fatal Push. Also allows me to play Wildfire on two in case I draw one of my indestructible lands. Opponent had to turn one elf. Now, probably keep Wildfire for a potential Nykthos if her opponent's on the Devotion deck. And then I could see Reunion discard Fatal Push since we already killed the turn 1 Elf, so there's not too many more other cards we need to push out of the green Devotion deck. Alright, and now we can maybe Wildfire our own Cataracts as well. There's Nykthos, also a valid target. Although now their opponent enchanted their Forests, we could also take that out since it's not restricted to non-basics. So we'll give that a try here instead. And we'll play our cliffs. Okay, so we've got our tree, just missing Phobia, and then Castle has our card draw engine. But it's going to be quite painful with all these lands in hand. So hoping to find more discard effects. Follow Could Awakening could be very good, as our opponent plays a second Haven. Okay, play our tree. And our opponent's a good 4 mana, finally. And Elvish Mystic the play. Okay, so we can take out the Mystic. Put Gigantha in hand. And then maybe discard it later, or we can play it out next turn if we don't have anything else going on. Okay, Stomper for ramp. That's fine. So the Green Devotion deck shouldn't have too many ways of altering their own life total unless Karn gets involved. So that's at least good news. Now, can take out Stomper, still draw with Castle, which may be the play. Can also give Gigantha haste to use its mana ability right away. Don't think that's going to be too relevant. Okay, so our opponents hit a few land drops. There's a Nissa. That's a pretty big problem. So we may need to go for a hasty Gigantha after all. Rise, my elemental friend. And an old growth troll. So now they've got a decent blocker lined up. Let's draw. Another tree, doesn't help. And there's our Phobia, perfect. Okay, so now we just need to dodge some Karn shenanigans and then we should be okay. But our opponent gets to untap with a lot of mana. One card left. What's it going to be? Could be a Storm the Festival. Nope, it's Karn. Alright, let's see what Karn searches up here. Could be a leveler to destroy our Phobia. My grief fuels my mission. Shadow Spear? Shadow Spear doesn't do it. So glad we stuck around. Possible they didn't have a leveler to search up. Oh, 
we're at 14, so we're not in danger of dying. Which is maybe why our opponent didn't attack with the 3-3s. Three opponent's at 13, untap. And that should be game. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got all the combo pieces. Just uh, missing black mana, but we should be able to find some. Thought says we'll have to wait. Opponent with a Leafkin, so elementals. Okay, can play Reunion now. Discards Demonic Bargain, which we shouldn't need. And then I can Wildfire to get a Swamp now, at least. Opponent's got the Risen Reef, so they're off to a nice start. Okay, so now with Cliffs, I can still Wildfire and Thoughtseize. Maybe take an Omnath. Okay, opponent's got another Risen Reef, Omnath. Escape to the Wild is also very good. So their hand is stacked. What makes more sense to take? It's between Risen Reef and Omnath, I think. Omnath, they can play next turn if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let's see, blue-green, I guess they don't quite have the mana. Unless they fetch with Fabled Passage, but then they lose some of the utility from Omnath. So yeah, let's just take a Risen Reef. So they will have to fetch white or red mana. At which point they may just escape instead of playing Omnath. Goes for Zendikar's Royal. Okay, so... Yeah, we could go for the Throat Risen Reef, so it doesn't get out of hand with Zendikar's Royal. Or I can just play one of my 4 mana win conditions here. And then, turn after, we can set up the win. Although our opponent's going to get a chance to go off with Escape, which is quite scary. So the safer approach may be go for the Throat, but that also slows us down quite a bit. So I'm just going to play the tree here. Maybe it would have been worth it to keep up Reunion. In case our opponent has something like a Leyline Binding. Okay, opponent escapes and finds Genesis Ultimatum. Yasharn doesn't really affect us. Can prevent us from sacking Reunion, maybe. Can uh, Phobia and kill Risen Reef. And hopefully our opponent doesn't have a Boseju to blow things up. Lotus Cobra, that's fine. Another Lotus Cobra. I think killing Risen Reef is still the safest. Since Risen Reef can put lands in play, which then make more mana with the Cobra. Alright. So they still have a lot of mana to work with, since they can potentially grow spiral, put another land in play too. Just gonna be Yasharn. That's fine. And then I need to make sure that I don't fall to 13 myself somehow. Another Leafkin. Okay. Activate tree, and yeah, Puna knows the writings on the wall and explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And our hand is missing some of our combo pieces, but we can bargain to find a second one after maybe a reunion helping us pick up the first. Let's have a look. Okay, put on some sort of Jeskai control deck. Uh, cover up a hard counter, although they don't have any blue mana. Revitalize could potentially mess up our combo by gaining life at instant speed. So that might be the pick, actually. Uh, 
and then they likely cycle the first revitalize here. So let us reunion this card go for the throat, which shouldn't be very helpful. Next turn, seize the spoils, either discarding Citadel or Fatal Push. Opponent did find their first blue mana. Okay, now I'm kind of liking Awakening instead, since we have a lot of cards we wouldn't mind discarding. So we'll pass it back. Maybe should have just main phased Awakening before they pick up a second blue source. Opponent foretells a card instead. So. Cast the Instant Speed Awakening, and everything but Bargain can go. We're likely finding another land. Alright, we found both combo pieces. Now Castle does come into play tapped is the only downside. But I can Thought Seize and then Reunion Discard Fatal Push. Take away their counter spell. And play tapped cliffs. Okay, so we should be good to set up our combo here. Might want to wait on tree until I can give it haste with bitter union to activate right away. So I'll play the phobia first. Behold the multiverse, the card they foretold. So Lantern Flare can deal damage to a creature or Planeswalker and gain some life as well. But it's equal to the number of creatures they control. So it can actually save them from uh, the Tree of Perdition activation. Although now we can duress it. As opposed to play Tree, give it haste. Because the opponent can cast it with a cleave cost at instant speed to essentially gain two life, which is enough to survive. Don't know if they'll see that line necessarily. So it could also just play tree and pass. And then if we suspect they keep up the lantern, then we don't have to go for it. Okay, opponent dissipates instead. In which case I might as well duress. And farewell definitely has to go here since we won't be able to win the game before they get a chance to cast it. And then we may as well gain life. Wildfire can go after Sacred Foundry in case they don't have a mountain. Or we can target our own lands. Now I probably have to wait to find a discard spell to uh, take away the Lantern Flare. So they don't mess up our combo. So could wildfire my own lands and then still bargain in case we pick up a discard spell first. Okay. So bargain can find another duress maybe. And then next turn I can duress, play tree, and give it haste. Opponent's gonna big score, hopefully not finding another farewell. Although we have backup phobias in hand at least. Alright, points good to run, cleansing wildfire. Fair enough. So let's have a look. They may have picked up a counter spell. It's going to be a march to exile phobia. All right, just play another one here. And Jingataxius luckily doesn't counter creatures or enchantments. Uh, doubling burn down the house also doesn't really matter. So yeah, take lantern flare, play phobia and pass. There's Jin. And 
and there's a tree. And we'll just pass here, I think. And yeah, opponent sees a riding on the wall and concedes on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Double fatal push and then reunion to dig towards our phobia. And uh, do we want to keep a push on turn one? Sure. Since I probably want to tap out for reunion. Alright, Kumano punishes us for keeping up fatal push. Now I could also duress. Interesting uh, call, since our opponent's likely playing a haste creature that picks up a plus one counter, so might want to keep up fatal push. So let's just play time blood crypt and pass. So our opponent's red green, and they did just play an oasis, which we'll have to deal with through a wildfire. Okay, so do we think our opponent has a lot of non-creature spells? Their deck is mostly just creatures. So in that case, maybe discard the rest with a reunion. And another fatal push, and we found our phobia. So now I just need wildfire to deal with the oasis. But the tree should buy us some time as a nice blocker. Double Oasis, oh no. That's gonna make it tough. Opponent's taking a lot of damage, so maybe we just win some other way with the Phobia, but that seems tough to set up. Maybe our opponent taps out and we can still get them with a tree. Double tree could maybe make something happen. If they lose life to the oasis, or respond with another tree activation. Okay, shaman to prevent us from blocking. So we're taking five here. And another Kumano. Yeah, I guess we'll go for Phobia and then hope our opponent does not keep back their Oasis to play around it. And then we have to not take 9 damage here, which is not a guarantee. Okay, Firebrand can also play around Phobia if they keep it back. Yeah, opponent knows what's up. So we're not going to get them. Fatal push could still kill Firebrand here. And our opponent did tap out for Brawler, but they still have Oasis that they can activate. So I think I just have to hope they don't see the line with Oasis. So in response to this trigger, Fatal push Firebrand. Opponent targets themselves. That resolves. And then we'll activate our tree. And hope they don't tap Oasis in response. Alright, her opponent did not see the line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand seems decent. Can bargain to find our tree. And then, I guess we don't have to take two damage necessarily. Thoughtseize. Opponent on a Marvel combo deck. And should probably take the namesake card. So they're pretty low on energy sources, just a rogue refiner and then vessel to try and find some. So in this matchup, the main concern is a puzzle knot, believe it or not. Uh, since that can gain the opponent life at instant speed, which can potentially counteract our tree activation. Did find a tree. Can uh, wildfire the opponent's land here. Even though they'll have plenty of basics because of a tune with ether. Can still maybe take them off red mana if they get a forest. And then now 
We could bargain for land, potentially. Opponent did find a puzzle knot, so yeah. Hopefully they'll sacrifice it before we have to uh, show them any of our combo pieces. One way to potentially counteract the puzzle knot is by getting another Tree of Perdition. So maybe that's the move. Since we have the fourth land already. Could have also gone for Thoughtseize to maybe play on turn 5 to try and take away one of the opponent's cards. Although they would have been able to play a Marvel in the meantime. Okay, so opponent still has the puzzle not in play. But we'll play the tree here. And then we'll see if we can sneak this Triskai Decophobia into play and win the game. So they don't quite have the energy to activate a Marvel yet. Opponent sacks a vessel. And did find a Marvel. So now I may need to try and find a discard spell for it. Servants, yeah, Poen still has the puzzle knots and now has enough energy to activate Marvel. So that's bad news, but we did find a bargain. So yeah, I guess bargain, look for Thoughtseize or Duress. It is giving the opponent more time to just hard cast some of their cards as well here. Especially with Servant, they can easily hard cast a Traxa. Although, if it doesn't win them the game on the spot, it's probably fine. And then now do we play Awakening? Sure. Opponent's gonna tune. They can get a Forest. If they have any left. Play Vessel activated, so they're probably still not gonna sacrifice Puzzle Knot. Opponent got a Swamp instead. So yeah, I'm hoping they just activate Puzzle Knot. But as soon as we show Triskaidekaphobia, opponent's gonna maybe keep it safe. Opponent puts Gigantha in hand. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play the enchantment here. If our opponent wants to keep a Puzzle Knot, then we'll play it slow and play another tree. So we'll see what they do. Opponent can play around the combo. But if they tap out for an Atraxa, we could get them. Ooh, opponent found a Carpluzen Forest, so that's a pain land that can also counteract Phobia. So now I may need to find another Wildfire. But hopefully they just tap out for Atraxa, although I don't see that happening now. Opponent sacrifices Vessel, tapping the forest in the process. Okay. That's good. So now we just need them not to be able to sack Puzzle Knot. If you're not used to playing against this deck, it's easy to miss some obvious ways to counteract it, like the Pain Lands and the Instant Speed Life Gain. So our opponent may be digging for another Marvel instead. Finds a Rogue Refiner. And plays it out. Alright, so now the coast is clear. No more mana to sack Puzzle Knot. And, uh, yeah, activate tree. Does our opponent have a Boseju here somehow? Nope, just a Harness Lightning. Okay, I guess that uh, does prevent the exchange from taking place. If our creature dies, there's nowhere for the opponent's life total to go. So our opponent bought themselves another turn. So let's lose life, since otherwise I'm going to die to my own Triskaidekaphobia. Found another one. So, play tree after a reunion discarding Phobia to hopefully find a land to give the tree haste. Could still do it. No lands, but a Thought Seize. But if I just Thought Seize away a Traxa, that doesn't really solve my problem since I'm still gonna take eight and just die on the board. 
And of course we can still activate Trainer Upkeep, so I guess the haste wasn't really necessary. But now we've got uh, Forests slash Puzzle Knot problem once again. So we'll see if our opponent plays around it. Taps out for Atraxa. Finds Amrakul, Ugin, plenty of goodies. But as long as we activate tree in response to the Phobia trigger, we should be good. Opponent finds plenty of action. And with an Amrakul next turn, we would definitely be dead. Can soak up three damage, take five. And then activate tree in response. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got both combo pieces, a wildfire to ramp into the Monterey 3, so pretty good hand. Just missing some cheap interaction. Let's see what we're up against. Red white. Okay, got a bargain for added redundancy. And looks like a heroic deck. Yeah, I'll play the tree. Should not be in any danger of losing it. And then I'll save as much life as possible. Even if they cast like a Reckless Rage and flash it back with Arcanist, it's still only 8 damage. That's gonna be a Light Scribe. And our opponent passes. And yep, yeah, just gonna play Phobia and pass. And our opponent needs to deal 20 damage through a 13 toughness tree. It's gonna be tough. No pain lands in their mana base for us to worry about, otherwise Bargain can find another wildfire. I guess our opponent could also try to uh, put us to 13, and that would be enough. So that's maybe more achievable. Show of confidence, step one. But of course, depending on their attack, we can either take it or block to make sure we don't fall to either 0 or 13 life. So we'll have to do some math here. Point attacking for 12. So if I take it, then let's say our opponent has double infuriate. That's plus 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 damage. We could be dead. If I block, then our opponent needs to somehow deal uh, one more damage, which is not going to happen with a Light Scribe. Unless maybe a God's Willing, I guess, doesn't increase their power. Yeah, so I think the safest is still to block, and then worst case scenario, it's a draw. Alright, so we're at 14. And then we can activate our tree. And unless they have a burn spell here, we should be good. Alright, so we get to see our 13 tribal deck in action. And yeah, it's a lot of fun when we can assemble the tree alongside Triskaidekaphobia. There's still a lot of challenges along the way, especially if the opponent has some pain lands in their mana base. It can take us a little bit too long to make sure everything is taken care of to set up the combo. So definitely not a competitive deck, would not recommend this to rank up on the ladder, since you're gonna die to a lot of the faster decks in the format, and it's still kind of a clunky combo to assemble, but it's somewhat consistent at getting the alternate win condition online, which is all that matters. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.